5 Great Tips to Improve Your Personal Finances In this day and age, if you have money you have everything. Money cannot buy happiness is quite a debatable statement. Anyways, you need money to survive and obviously if you dream to spend a luxurious life. It is well proven that saving will not multiply your money. Investment will. Make sure you find out multiple ways to secure your future. This is where the personal finances comes into play. Personal finances refer to money management and how your future is planned. Improving your financial health will spare you stress later. With small investment efforts, you can secure a favorable future ahead of you. Here are some ways in which you can improve your personal finances, create and maintain your budget. Make sure your finances are organized. Manage them using tools available offline and online. Keep track on where your money goes. Evaluate and analyze your net worth frequently. Your net worth is a representation of where you currently stand. This will fluctuate often with time and disturbances in the market. Tracking your financial standing will help you evaluate your progress and highlight the areas which require improvement. Create a personal budget. Figure out what your expenses are and prioritize your spending. Manage your expenses into categories like education, housing, food, utilities, transportation and savings. Learn to manage your money. If you have money left over after all your expenses, decide how to use them. Utilize it wisely. You should have enough money saved at all the times to face unforeseen emergencies. Start saving for your retirements as soon as possible. You never know which turn your life might take. Be prepared for the worst at all times. Reinvest your earnings as a method of saving. The longer the investment is going to be, the greater will be the return. If you are working for a company and earn a salary each month, Keep a check on provident funds. Check your PF balance on a regular basis. The sooner you start your saving plans, the easier it will be for you to reach your long-term financial goals. Consequently you will also have to save less each month. The more you earn, the more you spend money. This is the general trend followed by most people. This phenomenon is known as lifestyle inflation. If you spend excessively, it will damage your long-term wealth. People usually have the desire to keep up with the elite society. If the world dines in excessively expensive restaurants, you might be pressured to do the same as well. However, this can cost you a lot in the long run. As you start to earn more, some increase in spending is normal to enhance your social and professional lifestyle. But extravagance is not a positive indication. Make sure you have drawn the line between your needs and your wants so you can make better decisions when spending. Needs are those things that you must have in order to survive like food and shelter. Whereas wants are your desires that are not required for your survival. Make sure that your choices are clear. You can get an economical car rather than buying an expensive BMW because both will serve the same purpose. Prioritize your needs. Once your needs are satisfied then consider the possibility of achieving your wants if it seems reasonable to do so according to your budget. As mentioned above. You never know what might happen next. Dedicate some amount of your income to emergency funds. Ensure that you are able to fight with unexpected expenses. The journey to paying down your debt can be challenging in the best of times. It can be even more complicated when you're balancing the effects of a global recession. Many Americans are facing immediate financial uncertainty from losing their jobs or being underemployed. The economic repercussions of this pandemic recession will be felt for years to come. Although becoming debt-free might not be your top priority during this difficult phase, you should still take steps to maximize your money. The first on this list of debt consolidation tips is asking your creditors to lower your interest rates. Many borrowers don't realize they can contact their existing credit card providers at any time to request a lower interest rate. This often overlooked tactic is a quick and easy way to reduce your debt burden. And it may result in a permanent or temporary e.g. 12 months, interest rate reduction. Creditors are more likely to say, yes, if you have a history of on-time payments or if your credit score has recently increased. Even if that's not the case. The worst thing your creditor can do is say, no. If you aren't successful in lowering your interest rate, don't hesitate to ask again after a few months or after receiving lower offers from competitors. Credit card providers can issue reductions at their discretion. But it's up to you to initiate the request. High interest loans and credit cards can prevent you from climbing out of debt. Although you're hard at work making payments, interest charges are continuously accruing. This interest can quickly eat away at your monthly payment instead of chipping away at the principal balance. 
to help make some headway in repaying your debt. See if you can pause payments on your lower interest loans. Then, devote those funds to your higher interest debt. This lets you eliminate your balance faster and save you from unnecessary interest charges. Options for loan deferment vary by lender. In some cases, lenders might offer an interest-free deferment. Other lenders might continue charging interest on your loan during deferment. Contact your lender to determine if deferment is available and for how long. Even a pause of two to three months can help you put a noticeable dent in your high interest debt. You can quickly reduce your overall interest by taking advantage of low or 0% APR balance transfer credit cards. By transferring your existing balance from a higher interest card, you can save money and pay down your balance quicker. A low interest rate or promotional offer, however, might come with an additional cost in the form of a balance transfer fee. For example, a creditor might offer 18 months of 0% APR when transferring a balance from another card. This perk typically comes with a 3-5% balance transfer fee that's calculated based on the transfer amount. In this scenario, you could tack on up to $300 to $500 in transfer fees if you transfer an existing $10,000 balance to a new card. You'll need to weigh your potential savings versus the transfer fee to determine if this is a good debt consolidation strategy. Additionally, your new card might have transfer limits or a short introductory period before a higher interest rate kicks in on any remaining balance. Be sure to read the fine print and stick to your repayment strategy. So it doesn't end up costing you more in the end. Whether it's your mortgage, student loans, auto, or other consumer debt you might find a lower interest rate by refinancing your loan. Refinancing is one of the most helpful debt consolidation tips you should know. Refinancing replaces your existing loan with a new loan, usually with a lower interest rate or better terms. You might qualify for a better rate than when you originally took out the loan if your credit score has since improved or if consumer loan rates have dropped. Mortgage and student loan refinancing rates are at record lows since this pandemic began which is a small silver lining in otherwise tragic health and economic crisis. The bottom line is if you can find a lower interest rate for any of your loans. Take action. Remember, there might be associated refinancing fees or closing costs depending on the type of loan and lender. In some cases, you can benefit from modifying an existing loan instead of refinancing it into a new loan, particularly if you need immediate relief due to financial hardship. Depending on the type of loan. The refinancing process can take months, as is the case with some mortgage refinancing options. Loan modifications, however, can be processed in a short period. Loan modification can make your payment more manageable by reducing your interest rate or lowering your monthly payment. It can also extend your loan terms, which typically costs you more money in the long run. Contact your lender to explore loan modification opportunities. Always make sure you fully understand the terms and structure of your modified loan before moving forward. If you have high interest debt, you may be able to consolidate multiple balances into one low interest loan. This can save you on interest fees, but it can also streamline your payments into one due date, which can prevent missed or late payments. It's best to grab quotes from at least three lenders anytime you're consolidating or refinancing your debt. By comparing multiple offers, you're getting the best current rate since lenders are competing for your business. I recommend shopping around for all types of loans, especially for better student loan rates. Student loan debt, totaling more than $1.64 trillion in both federal and private student loans, surpasses all other forms of debt in the U.S., apart from housing debt. Because of this, there are plenty of opportunities to refinance or consolidate your student loans. If you already have private student loans, you should be shopping around for better interest rates at least once per year. Lowering your interest rate is the priority, but also compare origination fees, repayment terms, and any available cashback offers to pay down your debt further. If you have federal student loans, the decision gets more complicated. Depending on your financial situation and career goals, it might be more advantageous to keep your existing federal student loans due to their various protections, e.g. deferment and forbearance, flexible income-driven repayment plans, and available forgiveness programs. Before consolidating a large amount of debt, take steps to improve your credit score. The higher your credit score, the better interest rates you'll be offered. 
These actions can help lower your credit utilization rate while maintaining your credit history length. Both are important factors in determining your credit score. Another often overlooked debt consolidation tip is canceling small credit cards. If you use a debt management program or a debt consolidation loan, you might be required to close certain credit card accounts as part of the agreement. This gives the lender more confidence that you won't run up new balances and increases the likelihood that you'll repay the debt. Even if you choose a different method of consolidation, it's a good idea to cancel your smaller or newer credit cards by choice, or cut them up, to discourage you from using them. With endless opportunities to borrow money, payments can slip through the cracks. Check your credit report periodically to ensure you haven't forgotten about a small loan or debt. For example, you may find that a medical bill has been sent to collections without ever physically receiving a notice because it was sent to a previous or incorrect address. Perhaps you simply forgot about a loan that has an old email on file. You could be in default without realizing it. You're entitled to one free copy of your credit report from each of the major credit reporting companies, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, every 12 months. By keeping an eye on your credit report, you can head off any surprises and actively resolve any financial issues that arise. An often overlooked debt consolidation tip is signing up for a budget tracking service. It's easy to become detached from your money when you're swiping your credit card instead of paying with cash. This psychological separation leads to overspending and more debt. Free and paid budgeting tools can help you reconnect with your finances and keep you accountable along your journey. Platforms. Like Minter you need a budget, YNAB. Can help track your expenses and give you a big picture view of your finances. There are many free and paid budgeting tools out there. So find one that matches your financial needs and goals. Although these debt consolidation tips can help you save on interest and streamline your debt payoff strategy. It's only one piece of the financial puzzle. If you're spending more than you're earning, you'll continue to get trapped in the debt cycle. Start by setting a realistic budget, which might include significant lifestyle changes. You might need to trim down some of your expenses or find a way to bring in additional income. By relying less on credit to make ends meet, you'll reduce the likelihood of repeating the debt cycle. Text source, lifehack.org.